Hi, I'm Savannah Shaver, Manager of Alumni Engagement here at Catawba College, and I'm here with Dr. Philip Burgess, the Dean of the Shuford School of Performing Arts here at Catawba, and we're here to talk about lessons and carols and the process and rehearsals with students. So I'm just going to jump right in. Dr. Burgess, can you talk a little about the preparation that goes into planning the Lessons and Carol service at Catawba. Of course, Savannah, thank you for asking. Uh, this year marks the 35th annual service of Lessons and Carols, and the Co Catawba College views this service as a gift uh, to our community. And while the service is primarily a choral uh, music service and a wonderful liturgy, um, this truly is a one Catawba event. There is not a single department on this campus that is not involved in putting on this wonderful service. And we truly think it is our gift to the community. We start the preparations for this service as soon as our service ends on December 1st this year, um, probably before I go home for uh, the break over Christmas, we will already start on the next year. But about September, we really get cranked up. And, and as we're filming this today, um, the chapel is being de decorated and we're still got 10, 10 days to go before we uh, begin the services. Awesome, that's really special. <laughs> Very unique to Catawba. Um, so what piece was the most fun to prepare and what made that piece so fun? Um, without a doubt, the piece, I have students request pieces each year if they really want to do a piece. And without a doubt, the piece that's most requested is the last piece on the program, which is a piece called This Christmas Tide. And that is a piece of music uh, that has an interesting story because uh, the famous opera singer Jesse Norman hosted a party in Savannah, Georgia. And a composer showed up and she asked him when he arrived at the door, she said, Where is my, where's my hostess gift? And he didn't have anything. And he was embarrassed, so he took a Christmas napkin and wrote the tune and the first verse on a Christmas napkin. And over the course of the evening, the guests and everybody in the room fleshed out this entire piece of music. Oh my gosh. And so it's a wonderful story. Uh, and the students just love to stand and sing it and, and they sway back and forth, even though it's not meant to be swayed to this way. <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll try to curtail that in the performance, but they love that piece of music. Yes, that, that's nice. I also remember as a student being able to be part of that piece and Oh, we had a lot of fun, but you know, it's, it's hard to disconnect, you know, it's, it's just all around you. So we all feel it in our bones. <laughs> uh, so what was the most challenging piece to prepare and what made that piece challenging? Without a doubt, the most challenging piece this year to prepare is uh, For Unto Us A Child Is Born. Mm -hmm. And it comes uh, out of Handel's Messiah. And what makes that piece so difficult is uh, Handel was an opera composer, and so he approaches his choral music in the same way as an opera composer would. So there are tremendous runs for the sopranos and tremendous runs for the tenors and the basses and the altos, and that's not something they're used to doing. And the, the orchestra, which uh, is accompanying them, offers them no support at all. So there's no, they're really on their own. So it makes that piece tremendously different. Oh, absolutely. So what has been the most unique uh, about this year's choir? This year's choir is very unique um, and this year's performance is very unique because we have 53 uh, singers in the choir this year. And of the 53 singers, 41 of them are first year students. Wow. So the majority of the choir is, is uh, new to our Catawba community. But what is really unique with us also this year is the fact that for the first time, we will be accompanied by an orchestra. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we've not done that since I've been here at, at the college. The president, Nelson, asked if we would like to do an orchestra this year. And with the Office of Development and with his support from the president's office and from other uh, donors, we have managed to hire an orchestra. And so between, um, it's just going to be a great event because Dr. Nelson himself, our president, is a wonderful uh, choral and orchestral conductor. And we have hired a new instrumental director of music this year, Dr. Jones. And so the three of us during our performances here will share the podium. Oh my so at, during the course of the evening, uh, the orchestra and the choir will be conducted by three different persons. Wow. So it's very different. That's very different and, and kind of exciting for it's me as exciting. an audience yes, member. It's very exciting this year. <laughs> wow. Uh, so when selecting music for Lessons and Carols, 
What do you look for in the pieces, the musical selections? When I select music, it doesn't matter if it's for lessons and carols or for its concert or for whatever it is. Um, it's kind of like uh, being in the car and listening to the radio. If I don't like a selection, I change the radio. <laughs> right. If I'm at home, if I don't like the show, I change the TV channel, correct? So I, I try to, to be exactly where I am right now. And if I'm in the congregation, if, if I, I just don't program anything I don't want to hear. Because mm -hmm. I don't want to put anybody else through that. I'm not going to make them force, <laughs> you know, this is my favorite thing ever. Right. So if I don't like it, I'm not going to do it. And it also makes it very difficult for me to teach something that I really cannot believe in. They so, say, do what you love. Right, and what I, what, especially for this service, I want people to hear the lessons, and I want them to hear the music that follows the lessons, and that music should reinforce what they've just heard so that when they leave here, they feel that they've had a very cohesive experience. Yeah, a spiritual experience. A spiritual experience. Everything. Okay, um, that's wonderful to hear. Um, what is a message you would like to share with alumni who were involved in Lessons and Carol's performances as students? Well, you're <laughs> you're giggling because I'm you giggling. you <laughs> sang Lessons and Carol's with me for four years. Guilty. You sang for <laughs> so whenever I talk to alums, um, whether they were in music or theater, and you were a theater alum, whether they were in music or theater, or just a, a student on this wonderful campus in any department. They can either remember participating in Lessons and Carols as a reader, an acolyte, a crucifer, or as a singer. Uh, and they just have that, they have that connection to this institution through that experience. And I can talk to people, you know, that have graduated during my time and before, and they can still name pieces that they sang in those performances. Or sing them. <laughs> or still sing them, right. Oh yeah, we, we've never forgotten our parts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, so um, you've been here at Catawba for about 11 years as we were discussing. <laughs> what is your favorite part of Lessons and Carols that fill your cup? My favorite part of Lessons and Carols is watching first year students. Mm. Because the first year students, they, they know what it is to be in a show or a play, mm -hmm. and they know what it's like to be in a production or a concert. But for many, this is gonna be the first time that they're going to experience this very unique service, mm -hmm. uh, a service of Lessons and Carols, which really is a liturgical drama. It is a drama of readings from the Old and New Testament about the life of Christ and the gift of salvation. And for them to experience it I can talk about it, we can rehearse the pieces, but until it all fits together and those students experience it for the first time, it does not have any meaning to them. Mm. But once they've sung it after the first night, they get so excited to do the second and the third nights. Yeah, after. it's almost as if the audience is their propeller. Yes, right. Like all of a sudden they That's get right. it and they're right. excited. I'll never forget, <laughs> every year we were waiting and waiting and we would see all these seniors that would say, oh, it's our last one, it's our last one, this is so special. And we were like, I don't wanna get to our last one. And then it came. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that, we had that same feeling. And, and at the thought. end of it, I have the picture in my office, all the seniors every year <laughs> take a picture at the front up here at the, at the altar. Yeah. At the end of the last Lessons and Carols, we have a portrait made. Yeah. Yes, and I have those and the seniors sign them on it, my wall. It, it's uh, something that goes a long way. It does. It does. Uh, so, what would you say Lessons and Carols means to the community? As I said earlier, I would, I would hope that the community sees this as their gift. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Catawba's way of giving back to the community um, because the community through its citizens and its businesses and its organizations has done a lot to support our community here at Catawba College. Mm -hmm. and. We're not an isolated community, like we're not an isolated college, like so many college campuses are isolated. But, you know, we have a road running right through the middle of our campus. So we have a constant connection. Whether people realize they have a connection to us or not, every time that those people stop and let our students cross the street, that is a connection that they have made with Catawba College. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's our way in Lessons and Carols, it's our way of saying, Thank you. Thank you for those of us 
students who eat at your establishments, who shop at your establishments. Thank you to those of you who stop at our crosswalk and let our students go across. Mm. So it's our way of giving back. Yeah, and a come meet us. Yes, like, if you, and if, if you've you, not been on our campus, yeah. set foot on our campus. Exactly. If you've not been here yet, now is the chance. Yes. Wonderful. Um, so what aspects of Lessons and Carols put you in the Christmas spirit the most and why? So I, I laughed when I, uh, when I, when I, I, I had a pre, uh, I, was, I was informed of some things you were going to ask and I, I saw this <laughs> one and I thought, yes, I'm going to be honest. So I'm here in the chapel and I'm, I'm being recorded. I am so grateful when it's over. <laughs> <laughs> I understand <laughs> because it, it, there's a lot of preparation that goes mm -hmm. into this, you know. And and I, I hearken back to our I remember when my my mother would cook dinners, you know, dinner for thank for Thanksgiving and Christmas, and she'd wrap presents and she'd decorate the house and she'd do all this right, and she did that for weeks and months preparation. And people tore open the packages and so wolfed down the meal. So fast, right? <laughs> and then everybody was happy and satisfied. And then she would have this look of contentment mm -hmm. on her face. Job well done. Mm -hmm. You've done, you've, it's, you've made this, this wonderful gift. And so after the lessons and carols each night, I'm, about, I'm usually the last person to leave. Mm -hmm. And I turn the lights off and it's quiet. The building was filled with hundreds of people just moments before, mm -hmm. but it's quiet when I leave. And I'm able to reflect on that and to reflect on the amount of people that it has taken to put on that two hour event that people have just witnessed and, and participated in. So if that's the most wonderful part of it is when it is over, mm -hmm. not while I'm doing it, but when it's over. I love that. People don't really verbalize it that way. Uh, they they tend to say, you know, I'm glad it's over. I'm tired, you know, things like that. <laughs> but it, it really does give you, you know, those are the moments where we look back and we say, wow, that was worth it. That was amazing. Right. And that's when we do feel the most contentment. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, so is there anything you want to convey to anyone watching this service? Well, if you're if you're going to watch the service, either live stream or um, via a, a another, it's going to be presented several times. Um, I would invite anybody to, to quiet the space in which you're watching. Uh, make the space as close to what you're, what we would experience if you were in this building as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, make the room dark. It will be dark in here. Make the room dark. Light candles. This room will be filled with candles. Uh, just make it a quiet event so that you can Participate. I mean, join in the readings, read as the readers read along, sing the hymns in your house um, as we sing the carols. Just participate as you would. If you're an alum and you have fellow alums around you, call them and say, let's have a viewing party. Yeah. That happens every year. People have viewing parties mm -hmm. for this. I know one family last year had 30 people watch um, this at the same oh time. My gosh. It, was, it was a oh wonderful my gosh. event. So invite others to join in. Mm -hmm. But whatever you do, you know, make make this a tradition. If it was a tradition when you were a student here, make it a tradition as you are an alum or as a friend or support. Well, I just want to thank you so much for taking the time to share with everybody the preparation that goes into lessons and carols and, and sharing about what makes it so special and brings the joy to Catawba during this time of year. And maybe because we've been able to do this every year so far, we'll get to do this again next year. You know, things are so unexpected in the future, but I do think that this is going to become a small tradition that we that we do. Um, so thank you again. Thank you. And we hope that you all at home or wherever you may be, enjoy watching our Lessons and Carol service for this year. We